Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to do something for Easter. And it's gonna to lead to, I think, a bigger project. And I'm pretty much gonna call it Just Because and Morsels. It'll be an adaptation of those two words. Morsels meaning morsels of um, fabric, morsels of treasures, morsels of stitched pieces, if you remember the dragonflies that I did, just morsels of embroidery. And I just want to piece it together into a collage of just because. So is there a theme? Well, you could have a theme if you want. I don't really have a theme yet. I think it's gonna be a mix of nature, animals, and just because bits of morsels. Does that make sense? So you might have little stitcheries, you might have little projects that you've completed over the years that are just rolling around and you just bring them together in a cohesive manner. So I think that's the best way to describe this. So being it's Easter, I thought perfect time to kick off a new project. And I found this pattern now. Um, Rabbit Make Do, designed by Wendy Brown, is on Etsy, Stag Lane Primitives. And I just love him. He is gorgeous. So that's the pattern. I won't be making him in this form. I want to make him as a flat piece but use all of his little elements because I love his toes, I love his wonky ears. Yeah, he is gorgeous. So my plan is to, using the elements of him, um, make a flat version of him onto this old linen tea towel. Now the linen tea towel, I actually got in France, but you can buy linen tea towels anywhere. It's just a good size. It's not too big, not too overwhelming. It'll make for a great panel. Um, <clears throat> who knows, I might even break it up and cut it up as I go. I might leave it as an entirety. Yeah, I just don't know. It's just uh, a random project and I really wanted to make a bunny for Easter. And um, I found this little guy. So what I've done is this little guy's made as like a soft toy and you insert something into his tummy, whether it's an old um, cotton reel or a candlestick and it's stitched around his little body and then he becomes a, a running jackrabbit. Now, one day I might make him at the moment I sort of have a bit of another idea that I want to use. I like his form. I like his style. So, yeah. Still not sure where this is all heading, but doesn't matter. I just like the bunny. Let's just focus on the bunny. I'm not going to think too far ahead. Um, <clears throat> I just want to, you know, have a play. So what I did is the pattern itself I reduced down by 50% because he's a, a, probably a little bit big. But if you are making this project, which is just adorable, um, he's the right size. So I reduced. Now I think that's part of the pattern, yeah. All right. So taking the pattern pieces, reducing it by 50%, get you to where you need to be. Now, I'm thinking, I might, I've got some calico sitting here as well. I'm thinking I'm going to get him onto this first and then attach him to my panel, which is the linen tea towel. So, yeah, I hope you'll join me for a, a sit and stitch and we'll see where this project goes. I'm not sure what I'll call it yet. Maybe by the time I've finished piecing together. What am I trying to do here? Find the end of the calico that's nibbled into. There we go. I'll try and get this bunny out now. 
How are we going to attach him? Do we want to make him all rough and raw? Um, I'm thinking more along the lines of we turn over his edges and we um, applique him down onto the tea towel. So, like I said, I've reduced the pattern that you get from Etsy by 50%. Now I'm going to cut him out, allowing for a turned edge. Whether this is too much, too generous, could be. But I just want to get him... No, I, I'm going to cut... I'm going to cut him out. And then cut... I don't need... don't need that edge there like that. Just thinking as I go. You know how it goes, guys. I don't really have a plan. It took me a bit to work out what I was going to put him onto. It was just a random piece of fabric at first. And I'm like, well, what am I going to do with him then? So I thought, look, let's commit to something a bit bigger. Grab yourself a tea towel. And then <clears throat> if I get another just because idea... I've got a bunny sitting on a tea towel that I can add things to. And that's when I'm like, well, those um, dragonflies that I made could join this guy. It's just about find a bunny in a shape you like and um, stitch him onto something. <laughs> Don't overthink it. But I guess the best part of my thinking so far is <clears throat> it's going to be attached to a tea towel, a linen tea towel. So there's a start to the project. And I can then pick random items, random themes, and attach it to the piece of linen or the tea towel. And I think once I start this bunny in whatever way he gets attached, whether it be a raw edge or I needle turn applique him to the panel, well then that'll set the mood for the whole piece, is what I'm thinking. So these little legs, they're made to be three dimensional and used use a button to hold them onto the little body. The instructions are really good. If you did decide to make the bunny as per the pattern, um, instructions are really good. I'll put the link below, of course, if that takes your fancy and you're like, oh, I need that three-dimensional bunny. I did have another idea for the bunny is um, using some wadding and some layers of fabric making him still flattish, embellishing him, stitching him and making a garland and do like a big bunny and some little bunnies attached to a piece of cord and having an Easter garland. So that was definitely an idea that was floating around for about a week. And then when it come to this morning to actually go, right, time to stitch bunny, I pulled the pattern back out because I've been sitting on the pattern for at least, I don't know, six weeks. I don't know. I just don't feel like doing a garland. I'm feeling like it's a panel that I can keep adding to. And then when I see ideas or have a thought, I've got somewhere to go just because. <laughs> so that's my, that's my plan and that's how it <clears throat> came to be. So, little, little bunny. So if we picture him on the tea towel and then these little hind legs. <laughs> Gosh, he's gorgeous. So we'd need to cut two of those so that we can tuck that in behind so he looks like he's, you know, burning rubber across the paddock. <laughs> and these little arms. And then we can play with his legs. So, oh, 
gosh, we can do all sorts and then his tail. All right, so the plan is, I believe, to draw around this now to get our bunny onto the calico and then cut him out. Now, I was watching a few weeks ago, Catherine from K9N. Catherine, because she is doing a weekly stitching and she approached needle turn applique a little bit different to how I was taught when I was a wee whippersnapper. And that was to prep the pieces before they go onto the um, piece that you're adding them to. And I thought, ah, oh, what a great idea because often it's a, a challenge to turn the fabric. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do two of those legs. So I thought, actually, let's think about my fabric here. I've got, if I cut this way, it's probably a better use of the fabric. Yeah, so I thought, well, I might apply that technique because I've never done, done it like that. I've always had this leg would sit onto the base fabric and then you turn it as you go, stitching it down. Where Catherine tacks the fabric under. So then you get this gorgeous little element. She was doing nine little squares. And um, I thought, yeah, that's, that's like great. No pins, a few little pins, but you don't have that copious amount of pins that goes into your panels when you're attaching these types of pieces. So we need a couple legs, don't we? Not sure what position we'll put him in yet, but He's a moving bunny. He's not sitting. This boy is a running. Not sure where I'll put him on the piece of fabric either. So the first thing I want to do is get all of the elements basted or turned under, ready to be applied to the panel, which will be the next video. So he's got two ears. So there's the pattern pieces. Okay. <clears throat> Let's Let's get Bunny disconnected from this big piece of calico. Here that have just erupted into a hang of a mess. Okay, so let's start with the body. Now we could at this point make him padded. I'm just going to rough cut him out at the moment. Will we need to put a little bit of wadding under him? did grab some scraps here but I don't know if I want to make him lumpy depends what sort of look you want to do you might want to put a piece of felt under so the theory is we trim him back with a little seam and then we finger press that edge underneath back to the line and of course if you have some curves you'd probably need to consider doing some little snips where well, you will let's be honest you're going to need to snip around these curves 
<clears throat> to get it to turn. So I'm going to give it a go. If I find that it's a bit tricky for me, I might then add bunny to the actual panel and go for the old fashioned way of doing it, how I was taught as a kid. I actually learned this at school, I believe in home economics. I can't remember what we applied to. There's a pin that's about to dis a needle that's about to disappear forever. Coming out you. So I'm going to use a nice sharp needle. I think I need a harder surface too because I need to finger press those seams. So let me just grab <coughs> a, um, a little board that I can lean into. Okay, so let's start here. And it's just a case of follow the line. <clears throat> Wherever you feel a little bit of tension because you're, you're starting to head into a curve, just give it a little snip and see how it goes. This will be an interesting way to do it, I think. Because the, the biggest challenge with this style of work was all the pins. And then working out, especially if you're doing something quite elaborate, you see those beautiful, um, oh, I know a book that comes to mind. I um, wonder if I can reach it. Hang on. I think it's right behind me. Oh, yep, here it is. Look, calico and stitch. Hang on. I'm just There we go. This book here is just, oh, I love it. I'm always flipping through it. I think it's the colors. I'm very much these colors. I love old pieces of quilt, needle turn applique, very clever lady. Very, very clever lady. This is a book that if, if you like this style, look at the little houses. Gosh, I've got sidetracked now, guys. I've shown it before on my channel. Look at these little girls. What a, love, oh, what a lovely way to use Liberty Fabrics. Very simple, little bit of embroidery. Oh, clever, clever. So I've got sidetracked now. Oh, look at them hanging the washing. Oh, oh gosh. So that's a whole project. Remember my little cousin Edie? I've got her making these flowers just as a little hand stitch project. I could put some flowers like that on this piece, this panel. I haven't made them myself yet. Look at that bag, isn't it just adorable? Based on a Japanese rice bag. Yep. Just gorgeous. All hand stitched. Yeah, see? And I love how it's a bit rustic. It's, gosh, I remember doing this and it was had to be so perfect, you know, the stitching. Oh, thank goodness for slow stitch. You can do it the way you want to do it. Just take your time and enjoy the stitch. Nothing has to be perfect. It's just, it's just you. You and your needle and thread. Oh, look at this. Oh, isn't he gorgeous? Little cottages. I love the flower. Oh, there's my templates that I was using with Edie. So Edie's making a heap of these. And then you use the, I've shown you this before. Then you use a knitting needle. Isn't it just adorable? Oh, my goodness. Just adorable. Great project for a little girl to get, you know, oh, I just love that. Vase of flowers. Oh, maybe I could do um, a bit of a floral, you know, a, a random floral 
like the bunnies sitting in a garden and there's all these flowers and and do all this type of work maybe i've got to find some quilt too and bring some quilting into my panel like it's just to see all these little bits i love all that you know something that i love to play with and i haven't yet is twile i've got a little collection of twile some antique pieces maybe i could use that as my base i don't know i don't know guys where this is going to head it's just a linen linen tea towel is the base one rabbit based on this gorgeous little pattern so and then we'll just see what happens i've got some dragonflies flying around in a little container who knows where this is going to go it's going to be a, a floating project whenever i feel like doing something small that little small thing will have somewhere to go is what i'm thinking oh i like this idea It is a case of your little turned edge is now dealt with and you've got a great piece ready just to lay onto your fabric. So if I wanted to embroider this little lad before it gets to before it gets to the tea towel, I could because it's here. I like that idea. Hmm. So there you go, guys. Happy Easter to those celebrating Easter. I hope the Easter Bunny brings you some nice chocolate. Gosh, to be a child again where you put your hat out and you wake up in the morning and the Easter Bunny's been. Oh. Do you remember the day you found out that the Easter Bunny wasn't, you know, coming? I can't say that too. Actually, I should be very careful what I say in case there's some young people listening. Yeah, there was just this random day where I found out the Easter Bunny was just way too busy to visit me. He was a busy, busy bunny. There were too many kids to visit. So Bunny said, look, Corinne, you can take care of your own Easter eggs. Do you remember that day? I think I was sitting on a school bench and one of my schoolmates had told me that she'd got a message from the bunny to say bunny was too busy. And then I found out that I had a message to, from the Easter bunny to say bunny was too busy. So I had to take care of it myself, which is just fine. <laughs> I think you guys get the general gist of what I'm trying to say without saying anything too controversial for certain ears. Anyway, let's change the subject before I say too much, trying to let you guys know what I'm trying to say without saying it. Oh, I like this. This, this is really clever. Thanks, Catherine. Very clever. Did you see the little poem that she created with her nine little squares? You can read it one way and then read it down and it tells the same sort of story. And it's just a single word. Oh, very clever. There was a name for it, but it evades me. I can't quite remember what that was. Little bunny. How easy is this? <clears throat> wow. See, I would have pinned this to that panel and then using the needle, turn it all under and stitching it as I go. Where I can now make elements and then arrange them according to, you know, what takes my fancy, just finger pressing that as I go. Like, so I feel a bit of pressure there on that curve. So... And just snip in there a little bit just to take that curve and 
I'm just doing a tiny itty bitty back stitch and then moving forward with my needle. It's nearly the invisible stitch again. There we go. Just a little, little scoot forward. Then I'll be able to iron this. That'll get rid of that line. And then Bunny can make his way to the panel. I might embroider Bunny a little. I could collage onto Bunny. Oh my goodness, the endless, endless ideas of what could Bunny be. I need to get that shape there a little bit better. Don't scoot too far ahead, girl. You're going to lose his little nose. <clears throat> I thought I needed this panel here to give me a hard surface to fold this fabric back on, but it's actually okay. Oh, goodness me. It's okay in my hands. So what are you guys all doing over this long weekend? In Australia, a lot of people go camping because the weather is starting to change that it's not so hot and miserable sitting out in it. So it's a really lovely time to go camping. I'm having a bit of a quiet one. My husband and a friend of his, or a friend of ours, um, they're going to a car show and they're actually driving up to Rockhampton to a massive big event over the long weekend. So the boys, we hired them a, an apartment and our friend Dave, he has this um, coupe, a done up Ford coupe. And the boys are in the coupe driving up to this event. And we ladies, his partner Sue and I, we're just staying home for a quiet one. I'll catch up with Sue over the weekend. <clears throat> we'll do something. We might go have a nice breakfast somewhere and maybe go look at some op shops. Who knows? But the boys are off for a boys weekend. The only problem I can see is the car doesn't make it. <coughs> and we get a call, come and rescue us. We're sitting on the side of the road because this old girl has broken down. Oh, what have I done now? I'm going to not. So we're waiting. So I said to Sue, let's just not plan anything too crazy or adventurous because we might need to jump in the car and drive up the highway to find these boys sitting on the side of the highway in a broken down vehicle. It always can happen with these old vintage cars that are done up. You just never know, do you? Bits break. <laughs> and it's a long drive. It'll be a good um, five hours, six hours. And that's them stopping and snacking and toilet breaks and so Sue and I are just going to stay close to home. And if we need to rescue those lads, we can just jump in the car and go for a drive. And then I guess organise a tow truck to bring it back home. <laughs> so stay tuned. It's a, been a labour of love, that vehicle, for Dave. He's been working on it for years and... It's got a bit of a mean little engine in it and it goes real fast down a racetrack. So he's even had it on a racetrack to time its speed. His background, he's retired now, he's a retired mechanic, but his background was working on racing cars. So he's very much in that industry and knows what he's doing. So I can't see it breaking down, but I guess you can't trust old vehicles can you because things happen as they bounce along the road and go snap crackle and pop just to remind you that they were built in the 1940s and maybe not as durable as we think they are 
Okay, we're making progress here. I'm loving it. Love, love. I like the primitive shape of him too. He's not that classic, cute little bunny. He's got a bit of a whimsical feel about him, which I think might set the mood for the whole panel. But who knows? Who knows? There's no rules. It's just grab a linen tea towel, find yourself a bunny, and have a go at applique or needle turn, applique him onto the panel. This will be a good little project for me for the next few days, especially if Sue comes over and we just watch a few movies and hang out, eat Easter eggs. I have to think about what, oops, what we do to him. Once we've got his base done, well, what, what are we gonna do to him? See, I've gone quiet. I'm thinking, haven't thought that far. Let's just get Bunny, Bunny's bits made. Oh, I'm loving this. This this makes the project so much more. Um, I can travel with it. Maybe we should do a little bit of English paper piecing too. I've got an old piece of quilt that has all of the. Um, hexagons on it. I'm pretty sure I've shown it to you before. It's just gorgeous, but I just can't bring myself to cut it up. So maybe, maybe we do a little bit of that. Throw some Suffolk puffs at the piece. I don't know, morsels of goodness. Do some little stitcheries to add to Bunny. Could stitch him sitting in in the garden, like have the the embroidery coming up to him, so he's not actually stitched. I don't know. Can't make decisions just yet. Still thinking. First step: get bunny bits made. And then think about how we embellish Bunny. Even if you don't put him on a tea towel and you just have him in your stash, a, a pre-made Bunny ready for something one day, you never know, you might make a journal cover and you want to put a Bunny on the front. And... Um, that needle. I'm going to end that off because it's getting a little bit too short and it's only going to come unthreaded. Okay. Nearly there. Yeah, I'm really enjoying watching Catherine's channel because it's um, very technique orientated. So you're learning, it's like sitting with a tutor, teaching you little techniques. You know, some of them you may already know, but then there's these random things that come up and I think, oh, you know, that's a good way to do it. And this was one of them. Again, just a little, little stitch. Take your time, enjoy the process. It's all part of that relaxing, 
So now I'm around his tail. Think about what we're going to use for his tail. Could use a soffit puff. Could use something fluffy. There we go. Oh, love it. Like, how easy is that? Oh my goodness. It was like a light bulb moment when I saw that video. She was doing nine little squares. You guys, I'm sure you've all watched it, like everyone's watching. We're all sitting there going, ah, oh, that makes sense. Okay, I think I mentioned I'm just using Calico here. Just a homespun, I think you guys call it in some countries. Don't do it. I think that's the video too where Catherine was talking about words and how different cultures and where you come from is how the words are formed for you, you know. It's, it was quite interesting. So, um, for example, applique is how my grandmother and her mother would say it and they had a German background. Um, some of my teachers would say applique, some of them would say applique. So it's quite interesting how different cultures, you know, affect words and the pronunciation of those words, which makes it just really interesting. And often when you hear someone say a word, you can sort of get a quick snapshot of maybe where their heritage is. Oh, there's heaps of words that I'll say that mean something completely different in other cultures. I think Catherine mentioned pants and trousers. There's heaps of them. This makes it a lovely mishmash of words, doesn't it? There's one here just in our country. Potato scallop. Potato cake. So if you're in Queensland, they are scallops, potato scallops, often sold in hot boxes in service stations, takeaway shops, just as a quick snack. So it's a slice of potato that is deep fried really quickly, salt. If you're in Victoria, we've got quite a few mates down that way, they would see them as potato scallops. Who is correct? Well, it doesn't really matter. You know, these words are given to us by our families as we grow up as little kids, and they're just part of our culture. So if you say a word a certain way, it's probably come from someone within your family who learnt it from someone else in their family, and it becomes part of the fabric of your, your world, isn't it? It's... It's a beautiful thing. And when we're all sitting around stitching and someone's t telling a story and you hear a word and you're like, oh, isn't that such and such? Yeah. It's very, very cool. I love all that, that diversity. There we go. Ha! Oh, look at that. Looks like a horse. Let's get rid of that. Don't need it. I thought I would. We have a bunny body. Oh. I can't believe it. Catherine, genius. Maybe everyone's been doing this for years, but I wasn't. Thank goodness for YouTube, I tell you. I wonder if I'd ever bumped into a class somewhere where I'd learn that. Probably not, but YouTube allows me to sit on my comfy couch. Oh, bunny baby. Look at that. And now you just pin him into the position you want him and then stitch him on. Hello. Wow. Wow. Don't you love it when you find some little, little new thing? I do. How are we going for time? 
Oh, 40 minutes already, so I've got 20 minutes. Let's pick another body bit. His little feet are gonna be a challenge, so let's, let's get ourselves a foot and see how we go. Do a rough cut first. So you know what I'll be doing for the rest of the day? I'm gonna be sitting and stitching my bunny bits. And that'll give me time to think about what I'm gonna do with the bunny. I haven't got that far yet. I think this, let me just bring this book over. I think this is something. I like the style. I like the idea that I can find an image or a thought and do this technique and attach, attach him, it, whatever it, like I could do a butterfly, I could do a, oh, an owl, like plants. Mm. You can hear my cogs turning, can't you guys? <laughs> Oh my goodness me. I love panels too because, or tablecloths, or oh, imagine this on a tablecloth. <gasps> Didn't think of that. Yeah. Now I'm just going to do the little snip. We've got a lot of curves here, guys. So I might just pre snip it. Yeah, imagine a tablecloth. Oh, no, I'll stick to the tea towel. Because I'd like to do another panel, you know, that rectangular shape. And then just layer in goodness knows what. Whenever that takes my fancy. Did you ever think about the colour scheme too? What colour scheme am I going to do? I really love that colour scheme. With a little bit of blue and that orange and... Yeah, I don't think... I don't know. I need to dig out the twile. Oh, I should have cut into that toe. There we go, we got it. Wasn't thinking about what I was actually doing. I was thinking about color schemes. I might dig into that twile that I've got. I've got some vintage pieces and then I've picked up random pieces over the years that uh, fabric stores have. So that's not twile, but it's that soft floral image is another thing. Am I able to attach some of my hoarded quilt morsels? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I guess once I sort of think about what colours I'm going to do. Um, that sort of might happen or not. Because often those old pieces of quilt that you manage to find aren't in the colours that suit the project you're doing. So therefore they stay in the cupboard. So I'm just going to finger press that around there now. This is going to be a bit of a challenge because there's lots of curves. So just take your time and get your shape of your bunny. There's heaps of bunny sketches out there. If you go to Google and just even type in free rabbit sketch, if you want a running rabbit like this guy, add the word running to your description. And 
you can even do um, children's coloring in pages rabbit and you might find you know something that catches your eye get your shapes onto your see that's that's going to turn easily oh, gosh this is genius genius Catherine genius okay I think that's probably press finger pressed enough so I'm just going to start in that corner put a stitch in and away we go you could probably um, I didn't catch that piece there let's, let's try that again you could make this guy on the sewing machine like the pattern in tens put a very light very light wadding in him and have him puffy sitting on your panel too would be another way to add a feature is he going to be the feature on the panel who knows he could be part of many features i'm thinking it's going to be a mishmash of things a collage you know i'm big into collaging that's just what the girl does that's probably my true passion is bringing together heaps of elements in a cohesive manner i think that's where i sit in the world of all of this and that way I can sort of drift between, you know, embroidery and slow stitch and camphor stitch and seed stitch and, you know, there's ribbon work and bead work and there's heaps of things, heaps of things out there you just want to try, don't you? I'm talking to myself. Oh, how easy is this? Seriously, guys, you have to try it. Gosh, see, I haven't done this for so long. And I think it's because, oh, you've got to sit there with all those pins and turn it. And, and you're sitting there with this massive quilt on your lap. It's probably why I did so much. When I got into quilting, I did so much um, hand applique, but it was with a button, um, what do they call it? Blanket stitch. I remember doing this quilt that's full of angels with wings. I think it was designed by Patchwork Angel here in Brisbane. It's just beautiful. Lots and lots of pieces of fabric um, that iron on um, batting or uh, what do they call it? remember its name you know it has the paper and you draw your shape and then iron it onto fabric and then cut it out and then remove the paper oh the word will come to me I know you guys are yelling at the screen it's just one of those products heat heat and bond iron on visor fix it used to be called when I was doing it years ago heat and bond is the word I'm chasing but my fingers are just pushing through all of those surfaces and it brings glue into your project and I don't mind using a little bit of um, craft glue to tack things down if I feel it needs it but um, when your whole quilt top is visor fixed or um, heat and bonded down it's pretty hard work on your fingers I find I love how this has put a little dimple around him. Just another little detail, which I'm really, really enjoying. So I was talking to Tia and Susanna, and we we're all talking about Easter and what project could we all do? So I'm not 100% sure what the other girls are going to do, but it'll be something. 
something for Easter, project for the long weekend. Nothing like a little project. And I'm thinking this little project here will end up going into a bigger project. Be nice to have a spot that whenever I have a, an idea that I want to try, I can go to it and, you know, do something that is inspired by maybe something that Catherine's done or something that uh, Marion's done from Marion's World. You know, little techniques that these girls do and you're like, oh, I better get a practice on that so that it becomes part of my memory bank. And then have a think about what you can do to apply the technique to something. And I'm thinking this tea towel. See, um, tea has been doing a lot of English paper piecing. And Susanna's been doing English paper piecing, but it's quilt as you go. So the little piece forms its little panel and it's all backed and all comes together. That's a whole rabbit hole. And I've been saying to the girls, just stop showing me these things. I do not need to start 200 billion little hexagons to make a massive quilt. But I don't mind when I do a little bit of it, you know. I've done stitching in the past where the hexagons, English paper pieced, are really good to put in as a background around a bee because they really scream beehive, don't they? I'm going to end that off. <clears throat> so I think I might do a little bit of English paper piecing and work it into this tea towel. Morsels of things. Where's my cotton? Morsels. It's all about the morsels. So you could top stitch this once it's onto the quilt. You could do some decorative stitches over it, around it, under it. Oh my goodness, what you can do. Let's just get the pieces made, girl. Like So if you're wondering where my Friday video was, I don't put up a video on Good Friday. That's a special day for me. So no video on Friday. So don't go look and you won't find it, guys. You're probably thinking, oh, she's forgotten. She's forgotten us. No, she hasn't. Okay around there see oh, such tight little curves but so achievable in a hand stitching technique love it fudgy's just topped up out of bed he's having his oh goodness third breakfast I should look for a series that I could binge watch this weekend, hey, now that I've got complete control over the remote control. That'd be pretty cool. How are we going for time? Like I'm chatting away here. Oh my goodness. Don't rush. Don't rush. It's okay. I think you guys get the general gist of where this little bunny's bits are going. Be interested to see what interesting bunnies you find. If you've got a bunny pattern already that you may have bought from Etsy or from a book that you're going to do, um, just throw it into the comments because if there's anyone out there that hasn't found a bunny or is going to go looking for a bunny, there might be some hot leads in the comments. I was going to have a look in the Tilda books too that I've got because it'd have to be a bunny in there. This panel could be just lots of different techniques too, couldn't it? Just, just 
just had an idea. I'm not gonna say it out aloud yet in case the idea is gone in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> Too hard, Don't not interested, lost interest. No, 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 not at all. Now we're getting to a toe, so I'm just gonna carefully take my time, twist it in under, and then stitch. Oh my goodness, Catherine. Clever, clever girl. Maybe this was the way you're supposed to do it and I've just been doing it the hard way. I don't know. I guess it depends on who teaches you. Hey, sometimes you just get shown a great way right at the very beginning and that's your way and lucky you. And then sometimes you're showing things and you're like, oh my goodness, I've been doing that for years where I could have done this. It's like an epiphany. That's what this is. Oh, I love it. How easy is that? I'm not dealing with pins. It's soft on my hands. I can get stitches down in there that will be a little closer together to hold that toe. Oh, oh my goodness. So if you don't know who I'm talking about, I shall link link the video below where Catherine makes the the nine little squares. It's part of a stitch along that she's doing with everyone where you can make all these different techniques. It's it's great things there you may not have experienced and you can just do a little sampler of it. I did at the beginning consider doing it myself, you know, stitch along, but I just, I've got too many projects on the go. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I thought, no, I'll just enjoy the process of watching and stitching along with whatever I'm doing, listening. And then if there's something that comes up, I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. It was really interesting watching her dyeing process and I guess understanding the chemical reaction of things with the rust. And I've never had that explained. It was just, you know, throw your bits in water and hope for the best. But there's a, there's a science behind it and... I can tell that Catherine does a lot of that type of work because she she really knows how fibres and threads, or oh, same thing to a degree, how fibres cloth react in those environments. So that was really interesting. So, yeah, if you're wondering about eco-dyeing and the science behind it, Catherine's channel is definitely worth, you know, watching going down that rabbit hole. Speaking of rabbits, we have nearly completed a rabbit's foot. We've got heaps of hairs around here at Barham. They're just absolutely gorgeous. Hopping around in the wild. I believe I've made it around that final toe. All right. Let me just grab that pattern for the last few minutes of my video. I'll just pop that there so you can see where my pattern can you see it? No. There you go. You can see the details. But I'll, I will put a link to the Etsy shop. She's got some great patterns. There was all sorts there. So it's definitely worth a little look. There might be something else that catches your eye. 
is quite inexpensive too. And I think it's just one of those little patterns that can be adapted to all sorts of things. Maybe one day I'll make him, maybe next Easter. I don't know. Who knows? But what I'll do is I'll fold that up now, slide it into a plastic sleeve and just pop it in the, pop it in the cupboard for a rainy day. nearly there. Am I over the hour yet? Right on it. I'll just finish this this leg off guys and then we can part ways and you can go and do something creative if you're not already or go and mop the floor if you have to. I'm not touching anything cleaning this weekend. I'm going to eat chocolate, watch chick flicks. No, I don't do chick flicks. I do anything really, but there's a few good movies and series floating around that I might go and explore. There's one I haven't watched yet that I want to watch. It came out mid-April. Um, comes out mid-April. Looks really good. But um, I have to wait. Franklin, I think it's called. I think it comes out about the 14th of April from memory. It keeps being advertised. I think it's Apple TV, uh, but I'm not sure. We flick a bit through some of the different video streamings. It's about Benjamin Franklin and his time in France before he made his way to America. I presume, well, I, I don't know. I don't know enough about the story, but Michael Douglas is playing Benjamin Franklin and it looks like it's all filmed in Versailles whether he was visiting there on a diplomatic thing I don't know but um, I don't know it just looks really good and old Michael Douglas hasn't made a movie for a little while I thought he was in poor health but he must be okay so I'm looking forward to that one shame that wasn't available for me to watch Anyway, there we go. Look at that. One leg. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe how simple that was. Mm. Just, just gorgeous. So is that a hind leg or a front leg? Front leg. There he is. Look at this. Oh my goodness. He's gorgeous, isn't he? It's the it's the toes. It's the toes. There we go. We have the start of a bunny. All right, guys. I will toddle off and I will get stitching and finish my bunny bits. And then I'll look at my tea towel and where we put him. But I'm thinking somewhere in the middle here is a project on a linen tea towel. So grab yourself a cloth, throw a bunny on it. We'll see what happens. All right, guys, look after yourselves. Bye.